Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how I use generated fill in Photoshop because most of the stuff that AI creates in Photoshop doesn't look good, right? Because it's still pretty new, it needs some time to get a lot of updates and it needs to learn from every prompt that we use. So I don't really use generated fill, but I have three things that I use generated fill for and that's at this point the only three things that I use it for. So I'm not gonna create a whole design with generated fill because I feel like the quality is still pretty bad compared to Midjourney or other AI artwork creators. But these three things I would use it for. And I'm going to show you exactly which three things. And if you didn't know yet, I have Photoshop courses in case you want to learn more about Photoshop. These courses are really good for photographers or digital artists. So make sure to check them out and let's get into this video. All right, let's get into Photoshop. You can see I have this photo of this deer here. And I'm gonna use generated fill to do some changes to this photo. Now, the first thing I would use generated fill for is to create water. Generated fill is really good to create water. So if I, for instance, make a selection of this bottom part, just like that, make sure to make kind of waveforms and not like a straight line. I think it's better. Let's also pick this one. And then just simply click on generated fill and write water or river or maybe creek, something like that. And when you use these kind of generative fill prompts, it creates really good reflections and it looks super realistic. Now, usually we will do this manually by duplicating the top part and then doing some effects to this. And you can see here how good this looks. It looks really realistic. And now we can even pick one of these. And if we don't like any of these, we can just generate more by clicking this one. Right, so these look really good. Now, keep in mind that when you zoom in here, you can see here the blur. It's still pretty low resolution, so don't use it for digital. I mean, don't use it for print, use it for digital because when you're gonna print this out on a big size, especially, you will see all those pixels. Now, this is the first one. The next one is the sky. So let me here select the sky. Oh, let me select the sky here first, just like that. We can also pick some from the mountains there. Let's try this out. And for instance, if I wanna change the sky in Photoshop, I could use generated fill. Now let's try to make it more cloudy. I would just write cloudy and it will generate this in Photoshop. Now we also have change sky function in Photoshop to automatically change sky. But if you would like to work in generated fill, you can actually do this also in generated fill. Although keep in mind the pixels are pretty bad at this point. And now you can see here, it changes the sky and even some of the mountains. Now you can see this one is a bit bad here. Something happens there. But for these, these look pretty cool. If you want to change the sky, you can also write other stuff, but I'm just giving you the option that is possible. Now, and the next thing I use generated fill for is to, if I use the crop tool here, let me select the crop tool. And for instance, I want to stretch it out. Oh, I want to stretch it out like, like that then press this here and generate expand and it's gonna expand this image. And these are actually the only three things I use generate fill for. I'm not using it to create the whole design because the quality of the images are pretty bad. It's low resolution and it's not there yet. And you can see here, this looks pretty cool. Although here we see some strange things going on in the reflection, but you get the point when you use this, it works pretty good to expand your photo. And don't forget, don't use these for print yet because they are pretty low resolution. So those are my three prompts that I use generator fill for. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.